welcome back to the basement. A quick little video about this object right here. This is a Starrett hole adapter for an indicator. And it changes the direction of travel that an indicator reads. So this indicator reads when this shaft goes in and out. With the hole adapter, it changes that to a right angle so that the indicator can be put into a hole and read whatever shape is against this tip out here. Starrett makes indicators and they make hole adapters that all go together. This one is a Starrett 196. It's kind of a uh, white elephant. It's for an older style of indicator that isn't terribly popular. So this hole adapter from Starrett can be had for about $15, all things told. But it does not fit a common Starrett indicator. In fact, it won't fit one of these cheap import indicators no matter what you do, unless you build one of these. This video is about the Starrett hole adapter adapter. How to put a Starrett 196 onto your cheap import indicator. We begin by measuring the relevant parts of both the indicator and the lever arm. Knowing the overall length of the lever arm coupled with the diameter of the ball tips, we can calculate the exact distance from the fulcrum to the center of the ball tip. From there, we can lay out the desired location of the indicator itself, and the basic shape of the part becomes clear. Finally, we flesh out the design with final dimensions and construction details. So I'm just using a little bit larger than 5 8 inch piece of mystery steel. First thing we'll do is face this end. And it's uh, currently about 683. So I need to take off a total of about 50 thousandths. Six seventy-seven. We're going down to six twenty-five. So I'll take that off in two chunks. Six fifty. Take off another twenty-five. Six twenty-seven. Alright, so now we'll flip it around, we'll face this end, and then support it on center, and then keep working. So I'm beginning to thin down the shank in between the two end lobes. So now we'll flip it around, clean up this other taper. So there it is with the form turning finished. Little quick beveled form tool I ground up out of high speed steel. And so now we'll saw cut here and face that end off to final length. So I have set this on parallels and clamped it in the vise so that it's parallel. I just centered front and back using the centering function on the DRO. So now I'm zero set on the very end of this piece. So now I can just follow my drawing using this left end as the reference. So my first hole is going to be at 0.236 over. And right there, and I'll proceed with this hole. All we need now is another hole in the same plane that's 1.801 away. And I'm moving over till I reach 1.801. 
in a perfect world this would be a 3 8 reamed hole but I don't have a 3 8 reamer so it is what it is and there we have it those should now be the correct offset and we just need to turn this into a clamp so here I'm using this drill bit inserted into one of these holes as a guide for staying close to vertical this doesn't need to be a precision cut it just needs to be in the close vicinity there we go that'll work just fine so here I'm using the same parallels as before the only difference is that this time I'm using this drill bit as an alignment indicator to get it horizontal across here I can just view up under here and see where these are equal we'll be milling a little flat and then we'll drill and tap so that this turns into a clamp. Digging through my stuff, I found this kind of a thumb screw looking thing. It's a number 8 32, so I have a number 29 drill bit in, and I'll be drilling and tapping for 832. I'll drill this upper bore to allow the screw to pass without thread engagement. This looks like a number 20 gives me 161 clearance. This one I'm only trying to drill through this upper slice, not the lower slice. There we go. And now we just tap it for 832. All right, so there's the first look at that. As long as these holes are an accurate distance apart, then it should work. Now we need to make the bushing that goes in here and receives the shank of the sterret part. All right, so I don't have a quarter inch reamer, but I do have a letter drill bit set. So I just drilled this with a D, which is the size just below quarter inch. And with a little bit of slop that you sometimes get with drilling, this can just slide in there. So that's actually a very nice fit on that hole. So there's the center hole. Now all I have to do is turn down this shank to fit that 5 16 hole that I left in the other part. There it is after turning. This is now 3 14. That's a little thicker just to provide some support. And the inside is a tight fit for the stare at part. I will saw cut this, clean up the end, and we'll put it together. I'll be holding these together with Loctite 680. Makes a perfectly strong bond for this kind of an application. There we go. Now we'll let that sit up for most of an hour, and then we'll proceed. So from our calculations, we know that the tip of this needs to be flat. It needs to be 50 thousandths across. I'm not sure if that is just a hardened ball bearing or if it's actually carbide. But either way, we're going to attempt to grind it the same way, which is the diamond faced cup. And in order to get it flat and square, I'm going to chuck it up in the rotary tool. So, just for reference, that's what 50, in this case, 54 thousandths looks like. So it's actually pretty skinny. So I don't need to put much of a flat on here at all. And I can tell by the way the tool is running that it's fairly square. So is this gonna be square to microns? No. Is it gonna be within a half a thousandth more than likely? And there we have it. My best attempt at measuring the flat that we now have on there. Something like 70 thousandths. So now we have the tip. Now all we have to do is get the arm in the proper position. And there it is. After the Loctite has cured I did a, just a little bit of deburr using a carbide 
bit in a rotary tool. And so we should be able to assemble it. The end with the large ball goes down here, and this should be a fairly snug fit. Wow, that's actually a really nice fit. It is working in, but very good pair of pliers here. I intended to Loctite this joint, but with a fit like that, I think I may just go with friction fit. I think it'll it'll hold just fine the way it is. A little luck when we slide this on here, it ought to be aligned. Something like so. All right. Yeah, it looks like we have decent alignment here on the tip. And it works. Let's set it up on the lathe and do a simulated test with it. So here we are, set up to test this bore for concentricity. And this bore appears to be about, what, three quarters of a thousandth out for a for a total run out of one and a half pushing two. This tool will be a nice little addition to my indicator arsenal. I'm confident that this measurement is actual. So there it is, a Starrett hole attachment for a cheap import indicator. And hey, thanks for watching.